book of Psalms chapter 65. Psalm 65. Let's read from verse 1. Bible says, To you, silence is praised, O God, in Zion, and to you is our vow paid. Verse 2. To you who hears pray, all flesh, or all men come. Things of iniquity are mightier than I. As for our transgression, you shall purge them away. Or you shall remove them or eliminate them away. Verse 4, Psalm 65. Blessed is the one whom you choose. And cause to come near you. He shall dwell in your courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of your house. Hallelujah. Bible says we shall be satisfied with the goodness of your house. Of your holy temple. By awesome things in righteousness you will answer us. How powerful is that? By awesome. I love the word awesome. It says by awesome things in righteousness you will answer us. O God of our salvation. Who are the hope of all the ends of the earth. And the seas and of those far away. Mountains, the mountains are established by your strength. Banded together with might. Verse 7. Who stills the noise? Who stills the noise of the seas? And the roar of the waves. And the uproar of the peoples. And this is what I want to focus on the, the last four verses tonight. And the inhabitants of the furthermost parts are afraid of your signs. You make the beginning of the morning and the evening rejoice. And this is what I want to highlight tonight. He says in words 9. You visit the earth and water it. You greatly enrich it. The rivers of God is full of water. You provide the grain for in this way you have prepared it. You fill the terraces, the walkways or the patios with waters. Some translation says the valleys. You deepen its furrows or channels. You make it soft with showers. You bless the sprouting or the development, the emergent of it. And verse 11, you crown the year with your goodness. Everybody say, you crown the year. My God, how powerful is that? He says, you crown the year with your goodness and your paths. Some of the translation says, your chariots. He says, your paths drop fatness. They drop on the pastures of the wilderness and the little hills gird themselves with joy. The pastures are clothed with flocks and the valleys also are covered over or filled over with grains. They shout for joy and sing. Imagine the valleys sing. Hallelujah. The Lord bless the reading of his word. Are you excited this evening? Now the first few verses. Verse. Up until verse 1. From verse 7. Highlights the, the serenity of God. And it's been declared upon the mankind. Because the Bible says. You hear the prayers of all men. Are you with me? 
And verse, verse 2 speaks of all flesh. Or it speaks of God's serenity. His rulership of all people. Even those who are not of belief. Those don't who believe. He, de- he declares that he's God over every nation. Every tribe and every tongue. Then it goes on to say of God's elect. And he says that they are blessed those who are chosen of God. They are blessed because they are redeemed. And they are saved. And they are delivered. Are you with me? Then it goes on to describe the unmatchable power of God. Because Bible says that the mountains are being established by your mighty power. It goes on to say about the power, the unmatchable power of God. That would calm the seas and make them still. And the roars of the waves are quietened. And then we come to verse 8. He highlights the serenity of God, that he's God of every nation, he's God of all flesh, and he hears all prayers. He speaks of God's strength over all his creation. Then it comes to the signs of time in verse 8. Then he says of the morning, and he speaks of the setting of the sun. He speaks of signs, and times of the signs rejoicing in the presence of God. Because he says that the morning rejoices. Are you with me? Now, we're going to focus from verse 9 onwards, because I want to particularly focus on the, on the verse where he says that, you know, verse, verse 11, you crown the year with goodness. I want to particularly, but we just have to understand the background of how this psalm is laid out. And from verse 9 now, the Bible just takes a whole new shift in the scripture. And the Bible says, you visit the earth. He says that you visit the earth. He's speaking of his greatness, his power, and that he's God of every nation. And then he says, you visit the earth. Hallelujah. And then all the, as, as we go on for the next four verses, you find what happens when God visits the earth. My God. And I know 2019 has be, been a very rough year for many of us. It's been a challenging year. And many of you received the prophecy that is your year, but it was not your year. There were challenges, and even though we rejoiced over the Lord's doings, marvelous things, but still, for many of us, it was a challenging year. And some of us are still loaded with so much uncertainty, even as we go to 2020. We have these fears, and we have these these worries and anxieties, and we don't know what's going to happen, because it seems like things are not changing year after year. We come into celebration, we receive the prophetic, we pray, but things are not changing. Things are not just happening. Are you with me? And this might for some of us might be just another New Year Eve service like it was last year. And nothing has changed ever since. But I want to say this to you. As far as God is concerned. He has crowned your year with his goodness and abundance. You might be feeling the weight of worriness and anxiety and fear and uncertainty. But I want to say this. God has crowned your year with his goodness. Whether you see it or not. Whether you feel it or not. Whether you experience it or not. He, according to his word, has crowned the year with his goodness. And the word says that he visits the earth. And if he visits the earth, he's never changing God. It means that he still visits the earth. Hallelujah. Are you with me? Upon this divine visitation that Psalms of David speaks of. We find even God visits the earth. And as he visits the earth, he enriches it. 
He makes it full and overflow to provide, to prepare, to fill his channels with water, to make soft the sharp edges of the earth, the Bible says. Upon his visitation, he flattens down the rough edges and with the rain, the Bible says he softens it. Why? Because he prepares the earth for an overflow of harvest and abundance for sprouting and development and emergence of a greater harvest. As he visits and walks, the hills are flattened. But all this happens in an appointed time of visitation in the changing of seasons. Are you with me? When God tend to shift the seasons, that's where the visitations happen. You find the angel comes to Mary after 400 years of silence. Why? Because the seasons were about to shift. And upon that shifting or the transitioning, there was a visitation. Are you with me? So this time of the chronos where there's a shift taking place in time. If you have never been visited by God. This is the most sensitive time that you can have a visitation. Because throughout the scriptures. Whenever there's a changing of seasons. God visited people. You can tap into the promise of God. That if seasons are shifting, seasons are changing, your visitation must come. And when God visits, things change. Hallelujah. I want to say this to you. The promises of God is that he crowns the year with abundance, with his goodness. And it does not matter, oh my God, what is happening in the world. Are you with me? Because God supply his promises is never ever affected by the world events or happenings. He's not faced by all that is taking place around you. Because when he visits you, when he comes for you, he changes everything about it. So if there's a, there's a good time or bad time, I want you to expect every moment, every week, every day of your life to be surrounded by his goodness. Because he crowned the earth with his goodness. He crowned the year with his goodness. The crown that he places upon time. Is a crown of his goodness. So it doesn't matter if the good things or bad things or worse things are happening. Your expectation will be, God, you crown my year with your goodness. Are you with me? Expect his abundance because he speaks of abundance. Goodness of God is felt and seen when he visits the earth. Whenever he visits people, the goodness of God is felt. Amen? Amen. Are you with me? Amen. And I believe that we are ushering into a season. And if you are here to witness this new year, it means you have made it. Many didn't make it. Are you with me? God allowed you to see a new year. God allowed you to survive the year. It might have been the worst year. It might have been the best year. But God allowed you to survive it. And for the reason that you're sitting in here, it shows that God has been good to you. You sitting very much right now and looking at me shows that you are breathing. You had a food tonight. You still surrounded by your loved ones, which many people could not make it. So it shows that it's the goodness of God that you will be able to witness these things. It's the goodness of God that has made you to come tonight. It's the goodness of God that sustained you. It was hard, but you are alive. Because 
his, of his goodness. And I want to say this to you. If you're surrounded by his goodness, it doesn't matter whatever the circumstances are. If you could survive 2019, I can rest assure you the goodness of God still surrounds you because you, the bear witness of sitting in this place, is the goodness of God. If the goodness of God could sustain you in 2019, it will surely sustain you in 2020. No matter whatever the circumstances are, no matter whatever the situation is, how severe the droughts are in your life and whatever the challenges you face, I want to say this to you, that the goodness of God is upon your times and season and it's over your life. And if the goodness of God surrounds you, it doesn't matter the circumstances. That's what he promises. He says, my goodness will surround you. That's why David will even go into Psalm 23. says, goodness and mercy. He says, will follow me. Why? Because I see the goodness of God. Are you with me? And if he has promised that he crowned the year with his goodness, I want to say this to you. Everything will be fine. I want you to hold on to this promise of God. God promised in Psalm 61, 65 verse 11 that he will crown my year with his goodness. And if he crowns my seasons, my life, my year with his goodness, everything should be fine. Everything will be in his place where it's supposed to be. Everything will work out. Even the ugly and the bad and the worst are going to work out for your good. Because his goodness will rest upon your ear. If his goodness rests upon you and he crowns your ear with his goodness, it means that he will sustain you. He will carry you through. He will comfort you. He will provide and make sure that he makes a way for you where there seems to be no way because that's what his goodness does. He places goodness on times. How powerful is that? That he will literally take a crown and put it on the ear. Can you imagine this? <laughs> oh my God. I want to say this to you and many of you like, you know what? Pastor, but I'm no good. How can I experience goodness? But I want to say this to you. His goodness is not dependent on how good you are. Uh, how pretty you look uh, how educated and experienced you are how rich you are how far you have made uh, how poor you are his goodness is not dependent on you because if his goodness was dependent on you nothing no, no one of us will be here in this place because of his goodness is not dependent on you that's why you are here tonight none of us would have made it if his goodness was dependent on our doing are you with me his goodness is upon your life because how good he is. Not because how good you are, but now how good he is. So his goodness is not depending on you. His goodness is depending on who he is. And he is a good God. And because he is a good God, he bestows goodness upon people. He blesses the ear with his goodness because what Jesus has done. Hallelujah. Not because of you, but because of his son, he is good to us. The son who bore your sins. The son who took your punishment upon him for each one of us. That you could be considered righteous. 
So Jesus was crucified so that God could be good to us. Jesus was crucified so God could be good to us. And the promise that he made with David about the goodness, I will crown the air with goodness. He will do that because of Jesus being crucified for you and I. So Jesus was crucified so God could be good to us. In his goodness, he sent his son because he wanted to be good to you. And that's why he saved you. He redeemed you. He set you free. He restored you. And he continued to bestow favor upon your life. Because he wants to be good to you. Tell your name, God wants to be good to me. Hallelujah. Are you with me? Bible says... He crowned the year. Imagine this coronation happening with the gold crown in the hand of the Almighty and is placed upon time. You're talking about crown. You know what the crown Hebrew translation is in this text? It means crown. That was a joke. Only my wife gets my, my dry joke. I'm not a funny preacher. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Imagine God doing this coronation service in the heavenlies. And there this crown comes. In his hand and he places it on the times in the chronos upon a year and he declares that year that I will crown you and that crown was of what of goodness that I place my goodness upon your times <sighs> can you imagine that the crown upon our times is God, God's love. Like God's love. Encircling our lives like a crown. Because there's a no end to a circle. Are you with me? So when we look at the crown, you're looking at a circle that doesn't have any end. And no beginning. And imagine now when he says that my, I, I place goodness upon you. The crown of goodness. I will crown the year with goodness. Now the goodness crown is upon us. It means it's, it has no end to it. That God will be so good to us that it will see no end. That his goodness will never run out or run dry. That it's not like people who are good to you and they will be bad to you tomorrow. God's goodness upon you is like a crown. It is infinite. And it's not based on your good deeds. It's based on His love. You crown the year with your goodness. Are you with me? How powerful is that? The second part of this verse says, and your paths drop fatness. And your paths drop fatness. Some of the translation says abundance in, instead of fatness. Now, this word abundance or fatness got my attention. And it's the word, Hebrew word used, deshen. And I'll tell you why I want to highlight this word because it has two meanings. Deshen is a Hebrew word which literally means the fat. Abstractly fatness, that is figuratively used in the scripture as abundance. Are you with me? Specifically, now the second meaning comes. The first meaning of Deshen is fatness. And figuratively used word in translation as abundance. 
The second meaning of this word called Deshen in Hebrew means ashes. And particularly ashes of sacrifice. Are you with me? Because according to the word of God in Leviticus whenever the animals were sacrificed they were left until only the ashes were at the altar burnt offerings are you with me so he speaks of those fatty ashes of the burnt meat two meanings fat not this fat okay the body fat Fat was a very expensive commodity in the olden times because it was oil they will use it to burn the torches and do a lot of stuff with it used for cooking and everything it was a very expensive commodity and oil throughout the scripture speaks of the anointing of the Holy Spirit as well. Are you with me? So we find the word Dishan now mentioned in the second part of this verse where he says your parts drop fatness. It means fat or ashes. Amen? Amen? Yeah. Ashes highlight of the final work of an act. Are you with me? It means there was a fire and it's no more and these are the ashes. We had a braai and everybody know about it and when you dig into the ashes you can pick, pick up the pieces of fatness and etc. Are you with me? Ashes highlight the final form of something that has been burned. So ashes, in other words, speaks of a finished work. Everybody say finished work. Finish now, when we look at ashes, and I strongly believe that, when I said that God is good to us because of Jesus. Are you with me? When we look at the word Dishan and we say that it's ashes, it here speaks of the finished work. Because ashes speaks of the finished work. Ashes in this context speaks of the finished work of Jesus at the cross. Hallelujah. Because of his finished work at the cross, we can experience the burners of God. We can confidently believe and declare that he will crown the year with his goodness because he's been, to, he's been good to us because of Jesus. Are you with me? Amen. So you are blessed because of the finished work of Jesus. Amen. He alone has qualified you and I to receive God's goodness. What did we deserve? We deserve the judgment and wrath of God. But because of him, now we can be crowned with God's goodness. Now we can say that the goodness of God is chasing after us. Amazing thing is when the Bible speaks of his parts drip with oil. Whose parts are those? He's speaking of God's strength. He's speaking of God being sovereign over everything. So he's speaking of the footsteps of God himself. Because we learn that God visits the earth. So when he says that God's path drip with oil. Can you imagine this? The footsteps of God. That as he walks upon the earth, his paths leave a mark of oil. You know, when you see the horses running through the fields, you can easily see the marks of the hooves. And when you go to the beach now these days on the sand, when you walk, your footsteps are upon the, upon the sand. But now when Bible speaks of the footsteps of God and he says that your parts are dripping with oil, it means that when God visited the earth, he left a mark upon the earth. And what was the mark? The mark was oil. 
Can you just picture that? He speaks of God visiting. And then he says, your path, your footsteps drop oil. They drip oil. It, it speaks of the abundance of God because oil speaks of an expensive commodity. It speaks of the harvest. The feet of God walking upon the earth or visiting his people leave a mark of the oil which also speaks of God's anointing and his goodness and his abundance. That when God visits you, there is a footsteps mark upon your life. And that footstep mark are dripping with the oil because in the new season, when God says I'm visiting in the transitioning of seasons, as he visits, he leaves a mark behind of his footsteps. And what are those marks? Those marks mark abundance of God, his harvest, his goodness over your life, and more of all, his greater anointing because every season has its own own troubles every season has its own challenges and when we look at the oil oil speaks of the anointing you know what 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 does it mean to be anointed anointed being anointed mean to be set apart for a purpose are you with me so the anointing comes upon people the oil comes upon people to set them apart so when Bible says that as he walks and we see the traces of oil it means that when God visits you he anoints you when God visits a transitioning of a season then he anoints people what happened with Mary an angel anointed her for, him, for her to conceive are you with me? Because she says, let it be to me according to your word. There was a transitioning of a season upon mankind after 400 years of silence. And when God visited, he anointed. And when he anoints, it means he sets you apart for a purpose. And I pray that in 2020, even God visits you tonight, that he will leave a mark of footsteps dripping with oil upon you. That you will be set apart for a purpose. That you will not just float around, but there will be a godly purpose. And that purpose will speak of God's goodness over your life. That you will be like this fertile ground. A ground that has been marked by God's very own footstep. The march of Jehovah. The fertilizer. Hallelujah. May be traced upon your life with abundance. May it be traced the march of Jehovah. May it be traced upon your life with his goodness, with his favor, with his health, with his provision. May the march of Jehovah will be traced over your life with his footstep as a victory in every battle that you're facing. I pray that he visits you. I pray that he visits your houses, that when you wake up, there are footsteps of oil all around your house. And suddenly, where there was no peace, there will be peace. I pray he visits you at your workplace. And where there was hostility, there will be footsteps marked, dripped with oil all over, that God has visited your workplace and the favor comes upon you. Because when he bestows a crown upon the ear of his goodness, his footsteps are seen dripping with oil. I pray even as he marches into your lives, his peace will come upon you. His purpose will come upon you. His glory will come upon you. His healing will come upon you. His restoration will come upon you. Many of you have been experiencing lack, and I pray God's abundance will come upon you. Because as he marches, he changes everything. His parts are dripping with oil.
Are you with me? When the kings of the old progressed through their dominion, they caused a famine wherever they went. Because they went to plunder, they went to invade. They came, devoured everything. And they left a footstep of blood all over. And you would know that a foreign king came and invaded this village. They left the smoke. They left the crying of women and children. And they left the slaughter of people. But I want to tell you that this great king Jesus that I'm talking about. That when he marches a place, he enriches the land. Are you with me? Blessed are the people who worship such a God. That he's not like any other king. My God, the crown of goodness is upon your ears. I'm done. And I pray that the unmerited favor of God will rest upon you. The crown speaks of the herd, the fruitfulness. Because it speaks of the valleys being filled with grain. Can you imagine that they had no place to keep the grains anymore? There was such an abundance after the visitation of God that they had to look for the lower valleys where they could fill them with grains. Can you imagine the abundance flowing to that level? Why? Because they found these footsteps marked with oil all over their land. That every lower place was filled with harvest. There was so much abundance. It speaks of the abundance of God. The crowning of the year with the goodness of God speaks of God's favor. It speaks of a rainbow crown filled with all different fruits. And I pray that God places that crown upon your year tonight. It's his promise. And if his promise is for you and I for taking, it's for you and I for believing, it's for you and I to grab hold of it and seeing it being fulfilled in our lives and in the lives of our children and our generation. Because if it's a promise of God, he is true to his promises. And Bible says all his promises are yes and amen. They cannot go back against his own word. Crowning of year with his goodness speaks of the highest degree of prosperity and a glorious joy. Are you with me? Stand on your feet tonight. When the goodness of God is placed upon a life, He displays His goodness at the grandest scale, where people see and experience and witness what God is doing in the lives of people, because His goodness cannot be hidden. Whether people like you or they don't like you, when they see the goodness of God upon your life, they will witness it. Are you with me? It's something that you cannot hide. And I pray that God, even as He places the goodness, the crown upon your year with goodness, that He will make you a grand display for the world to see. Hallelujah. Father, we give you glory.